Proverbs chapter 16. I'd like to leave a truth with you this morning and uh, let you go before we come back for that big service tonight at um, 6 p.m. Now, I think you saw in your bulletin, some of us are going to meet and pray at 5.30. Everyone that can be here at 5.30, come early to pray because we're expecting souls to be saved tonight and all the young people, um, listen, do they need it before they go back to school or what? Amen. Lord have mercy. I feel sorry for them. So um, 5.30 this evening prayer meeting and then uh, the service is at 6. The video presentation on the devil's devices. Uh, you, you won't believe it. You will not believe what's going on. Uh, in Disney, Hollywood, the world, how the devil's making a bid for all these kids. He's ruthless. He don't care. He's not your friend. You'll find out as you go through life, this world's not your friend. And so don't miss that service tonight. Proverbs chapter 16, one verse, um, and uh, it would be verse number 8. Proverbs chapter 16, verse number 8. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. Better is a little, you're better off with a little and being right than a whole bunch of stuff without being right with God. I'm going to use that little thought this morning and preach on the subject, little is much if God is in it. And there's a song, I, I, I guess it's in this book, uh, look it up for me, Chad. Um, I don't know if it's in here or not. It's not, uh, it's not in here, but little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown, and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. That, one of them verses says, Does the place you're called to labor seem so small and little known? It is great if God is in it, and he'll not forget his own. That means this. There is no such thing as a little work for God. I've heard people say, well, our, we just do a little, we just have a little church. There's no such thing as a little church if God is in it, if God is in it. Now, this morning, I want to take this little truth here and illustrate it from the Bible. Everything that a preacher preaches, he ought to be able to illustrate it from the Bible and back it up with the Bible. So, uh, God uses little things to accomplish great things. One of the things that I love about the Bible, uh, among many, and one of the things that I love about the Lord is he's always confounding the, pe the things of this world that people are think are so great and taking some little non-important, insignificant thing and doing some big thing with it. The Lord's he, he, he's good at that. He does that all the time. And you know why he does that? So no flesh would glory in his presence. By the time you think, well, I'm a big shot, I can do great things, the Lord will take something little and do more in five seconds than you can do with a great thing in a lifetime. I'll never forget one time years ago, we had planned this big special day. And I, the downtown reverend, had a big message planned and I was going to preach and we was going to have the choir sing, and we was going to have a big service up, up in Marion years ago, years ago. And we had people there from everywhere. It was packed full, and we was going, I just prayed, and I said, now, God, use this sermon. God, use this. Oh, Lord, it's, it all depends on me, Lord. I've got to do good for you, Lord. Please use me. You know, and about that time, before I, I started preaching, there was a little girl who was crippled that come on the buses. She's sitting right over here on this section right here, and she stood up and said, Preacher, can I say something? And most people just looked at her like, Okay, kid, uh, wh uh, what do you want? Let, what this, let this little girl say something. And, and they had that attitude, and she started talking. And when she started talking, the Holy Spirit fell on that place. People started crying. Somebody else over here said, Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Somebody else, and I mean, it just changed the whole atmosphere of that place. Look, she must have been nine or ten years old. And I, I just stood back in amazement. And I thought, you know what? God don't need no big shot preacher. 
God don't need a big shot a, a group of singers. God, don't, and we better be glad of that too, right? And I'm glad of it. And God don't need a uh, Dr. Bottle Stopper who has more th- degrees than a thermometer uh, behind his name to use him. God can use a little child like that and do great things. The secret is if God's in it. If God's in it. You know the greatest thing me and you can do with our life, our singing, our preaching, our witness and everything? Get God in our life. Get the Lord. You say, how do you do that? By seeking him, by reading and praying and, and seeking the Lord. So this morning, let me illustrate that truth. Now, I'm going to give you some Bible stories with that truth in it. First of all, the rod of Moses. You know, God did not have to use that rod in the life of Moses, but he chose to do it. Little as much when God is in it. And so you know what happened? Well, you know the story of Moses. I don't have time to tell the whole story. Moses had left Egypt there when he, would, when he, when he went out in the desert and he was uh, a, a sheep herder as many of God's men were. You'll notice that a lot of those men, hardly none of them were kings, none of them were dictators, none of them were big. There's always some guy here in the backside of nowhere taking care of sheep. That's the man God still calls. The people God calls into ministry is the people that are investing in their life taking care of the sheep, his people. And the and, and Lord uh, out there one day, and Moses was keeping his sheep, and he, had, he was out there, I'm going to use this little thing here. That might look like be a shepherd's rod. And he's like that. And Moses out here, he had on them, them robes and everything way out there in the desert, and he was out there like that. And all of a sudden, Moses, all of a sudden, through this bush, And this this bush was like that right there and it caught on fire and it started burning, just burst into flames just like you'd throw gas on that thing and lit a match, burning like that out there in the hot desert sun. And Moses said, oh my, what I ain't never in my life. One of them old college professors said that Moses was just out there in the desert and he saw the sun, you know, reflecting. um, Yeah, I mean, he's 80 years old in perfect health and he couldn't tell the difference between um, he's 40 years old or 80 and he, he couldn't tell the difference between the sun shining behind the bush and one that's burning I think it was burning and, and he said he's like that and he looked at that thing like that and all of a sudden a voice spoke out of that bush and said Moses now, I don't know which would have shocked me the worst seeing a bush on fire that wasn't burning up and then it starts talking to you and he said Moses he said, uh, yes sir he said uh, uh, I need you to do something for me. I'm, I'm ordaining you into the ministry. And God said, and Moses said, who are you? And you know what God said out of that bush? God said, I am. I am. And Moses said, what, what do you mean you am? Uh, you mean you was? No. You mean you will be? No, I am. What was you yesterday? I am. What do you be tomorrow? I am. He always am. God ain't was and will be. He's am. Amen. See, if, if you, you, know, you know, some of y'all can't get hold of that, can you? You know what? The, with God, there is no time. He, God never says, I used to be this or I'm going to be that. He's always am. It's in present tense all the time. And, he, and Moses said, well, I've never heard nobody talk like that. You, you am what? He said, I didn't say I was anything. I said, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm God and he looked at Moses and you know what he said he said Moses what's that in your hand he said that's my rod where'd you get that thing Walmart I don't know where the shepherds get their, that's where they get them now I guarantee it uh, Moses went down to the local Walmart and they had them all up there on stack all the way across to there and he said I want that one right there that was no special rod and the guy said that'll be 1995, I don't know where they got them. Uh, but he, he, he got them there, and Moses looked down there, and he said, uh, it's just my rod, nothing special. And you know what? When that happened, the Holy Ghost went, Phew, and got in that rod. And from then on, till he died, that was a special rod. It was nothing till God was in it. And about that time, uh, uh, the Lord said, uh, what is that thing? He said, oh, it's just my rod. That ain't nothing. He said, throw it down. So he goes, 
And when he did that, the thing raised his head up like a, looked like a cobra, man. And that thing started doing like that, like that. And a big old head went back like that. And, and, and got, all you could see is Moses' feet running down through the bushes down through that. I mean, he was running through the briar patch and blackberry bushes and, and everything. And you could see, and the, and the Lord said, hey, where are you going? And he said, I, I'm, I'm, I can hear you fine right here. What do you want me to do, Lord? And the Lord said, come here a second. Uh-uh. I can hear you fine. And the Lord said, come over here. And Moses said, look, I, I ain't getting near that thing. You know what the Bible says, and it ain't been wrote yet, but when I write it, I'm gonna put this in there. The only good snake is a dead snake. And the Lord said, come here a minute. Let me talk to you. So he kind of tiptoes back in there, and there's that thing there, that big head sticking up like that right there, and that thing turning around. Moses comes around here like this, and he's kind of eased around here like that. And he says, uh, yes, yes, sir, what do you... What do you want? What do you want, Lord? And the Lord said, pick it up. <laughs> he said, my mama didn't raise no fool. I ain't picking that thing up. And God said, pick it up. And Moses said, uh-uh. I heard about them crazy people up there in the mountains of West Virginia. And, I, they, they, and that preacher got bit and it killed him. They, they don't know how to understand the Bible. And they think they handle it. And, Moses, and God said, Moses, Pick it up. And he, so he, so he finally went down here like that. And he got it by the tail. Just barely picked it up. <sighs> Turned into his rod again. He went, whew, whew. And Moses said, now you see that? He said, when you go in there and talk to Pharaoh, you do that. And you throw that thing down. And he said, I will deliver my, now y'all know the rest of the story. I, I can spend the whole time this morning telling you just that one story. How that from then on, you know what Moses did with that rod? He went out there and when, they, when he went in to see Pharaoh, I mean he went in there and he said, uh, he had that thing with him. He did not go in there without that thing with him. He come marching in there. You know, if I'd have been making a movie, they, you know, they made one. Had Yule Brenner and all them people in there. Y'all remember them <laughs> movies they made? It's pretty good. But boy, I mean, them drum, boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 come on, Aaron, let's go. There's Pharaoh sitting up there looking like a big Buddha, a fat king on his throne. I mean, it looked like a frog, I mean, full of the devil, and all up there, and, and, and Moses looked at him right there, and he looked at him like that right there, and Pharaoh said, who in the world is that? Get him out of here. Look how he's dressed. That redneck, throw him out of here. Like, boy, who do you think you are coming in here like that? About that time Moses looked at him, he said, the saith the Lord. Let my people go. And he said, man, well, you got to say the guy's got the guts. I'll give him that. He said, I don't know the Lord. Neither will I let them people go. Get out of here. And Moses said, all right. What do you think about this? And he threw that thing. <laughs> that thing turned into a snake like that right there. I mean, and everybody went, whoo! All his royal subjects were standing around here. They jumped back. Somebody else jumped back. And they went, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And Pharaoh went. He looked down there. Then they had a commercial. No. Uh, that's what usually happens in them. And they, saw, and, and, they, and they do that so you'll t you won't turn it. And they come back in there and they look down and they look down like that. About that time, Janice, one of his deacons, come running from over here. And Jambres, the other deacon, come running from over here. And they whisper. In fact, they're, they're in Timothy if you don't read your Bible. Janice and Jambres. And they come out he said, really? I said, yeah, man, we can do that. You can do that too? Well, do it. And they said, hold on a second. We got to get, get the power on us. So they go over here and plug their headphones in. I didn't turn on here. They said, before we can do this miracle, we have to get the power. And, and they go, and, and, and they go, boom, 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 boom. We can do it. We can do it. We got the power. Moses got his power from God. They got theirs from the devil. Right? Y'all, you're staying with me, right, kids? Y'all got that, J-Man? All right. So they come down here and they go, Phew! and throw theirs down, and I'll be if theirs didn't turn into snakes. And there's kind of coming like this toward Moses' snake. And Moses went, you didn't tell me everybody and her brother had done this. 
Now what am I going to do? And the Lord said, just chill out, son. I'll be all right. I've got you. I've got there. Just take it easy. And, and by the way, you know where I got this sermon? Telling my girls Bible stories when they was little. Uh, I found out if I keep it on about a seven-year-old level, all you adults can get it. Uh, that's truth. That's truth. And you know what? Uh, I, he threw down, and here come their serpents, and they started coming this way and coming this way, and Moses said, oh, my. What am I going to do now? They're probably going to kill me. I should have known better. And, I, and about that time, they started coming toward. And Moses' rod, his snake, opened up his mouth well, and swallowed Jim Breeze's snake. And then he turned around here, and here come that other one, and swallowed him. And Moses picked his back up, and it turned into a rod, and they never did get theirs back. I don't know what happened to them. My daddy said up in West Virginia, he said these two snakes got in a fight and opened their mouth and swallowed each other and disappeared. Uh, but, uh, uh, but anyway, he, said, he threw that thing down like that and that thing about, and you know that rod, when he told the children of Israel to come out of Egypt, they got out there at the Red Sea and Moses said, now what are we going to do? There's a whole Red Sea in front of them. They look behind, there's Pharaoh and his army coming to get them, changed his mind. Old Pharaoh got saved about 15 times, never did get saved. And, and uh, he, 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 he was chasing them down, and over there was the desert, and over there was the mountains, and up in front of them was the Red Sea. And they started talking. Boy, you got us into it this time, preacher. We should have known better. Before that, they was going to buy him a brand new camel when the 2019's come out. Hint, hint, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, really. And, and uh, they, they, was, they, had him, they had him a camel. They had him a nice seat on it. They was gonna buy him a brand new tent from Walmart and let him, uh, where he could stay in it. And bow they're saying, we're gonna get rid of you. You have got us into a mess. And buddy, he said, Lord, Lord, what am I gonna do? And the Lord said, what's that in your hand? Oh, my rod. He said, hold it out. Is it gonna turn into a snake? And, nope. You just hold it out. And buddy, he stuck a thing over that over there like that. And the Lord said, when he did that, that water started parting like that right there, y'all. And that water stood up and it jailed. It jailed. There was a wall of water. I don't know how deep it was over there, but they, they, they can show you exactly where they crossed. And they are, uh, historians have actually found iron uh, chariot wheels inside there down in the bottom of that water and they come like that and that big old water wall standing there can you imagine it was better than going to sea world it was better than going to uh, the aquarium over in, over in Gatlinburg they looked up and they seen them big old walls of water and he says all right y'all come on let's go and they went whoa I'm about a about a hundred foot wall of water on both sides, nothing holding it up, just stiff like that right there. I mean, little kids, all like all them, dragging them through there. Look, mommy, a shark! Come on, let's go! I mean, I mean, boy, they run through there and they run through that thing. It was solid, dry. Pharaoh and his army tried to come in there and catch them. They come in there to try to kill them people. And about that time, uh, the Lord said. Hmm. Quit blowing. The wind stopped and it came in and drowned Pharaoh's whole army. You know what God did? God used that little insignificant piece of wood. Little is much when God is in it. You know why I'm telling you this story? I'm telling you this story because most of you people sitting in here this morning think, I don't have a lot of talent. I don't have much money. There's not much I can do for God. I'm telling you, you God don't require talent. God does not require ability. The, the TV will make you think if you're not beautiful or rich or good looking that there's no hope for you. The world has no use. And that's not true in God's work. Amen? Listen, if God only took good looking people we'd be in the mess, that's for sure. Uh, but I'm glad, brother, he don't care. He'll say little as much when God is in it, little as much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. I don't care if you can't do nothing but draw a picture. You give God that talent and God will use your talent. You say, well, brother Danny, I can't sing. I can't play the piano. What can I do? You make money and help somebody can. You say, I can't make money. I can't work. You can pray that God will send forth laborers into the harvest. 
You can do something for God. There is no such thing as a Christian that God can't use and won't use if you'll give him what you've got. You give him what you've got, God will use you. Good night, the stones of David. I used to think about that. You know, God didn't have to use that rod. He could have just told Moses, speak a certain thing, do a certain thing, and not. You know why God chose to use that rod? To let us see that you doesn't have to be something great and wonderful, people, for God to use. I, I don't have time to tell you. Lord, I got five or six stories I can tell you. David, the Philistines stand over here on this side on a hill. Big old valley. Israelites stand over here on this side. And they were going to have a war. And about that time, Goliath comes out. He's nearly 10 feet tall and if they, if they went by the other definition of cubic much much taller so the guys up there like this way up there I mean it almost touched that ceiling there and he comes out and he's got all this armor on that's a big man and nobody would fight him nobody would fight him they were all scared Saul the king all the, the, the soldiers, all the, the workers. And he come out and he challenged and, and took God's name in vain. And he come out, that's a picture of the world. That's a picture of the drug dealer. That's a picture of the, of the, the, uh, the man out there that intimidates you and tries to get you to do wrong. That's a picture of your boyfriend for some of you. Uh, that's a picture of, uh, of, of your girlfriend. That's, a, that's Goliath. He's the worst enemy you got. He come down there and says, send me somebody out here. Come on, you bunch of blankety blank, that he blank, 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 that he blank, blank, that he blank, blank, blanks. He had watched him TV so much and listened to so much rap music that he couldn't talk without cussing. Now, somebody that watches, listens to rap music all the time and can't talk without cussing has a dirty heart. And they need their heart washed in the blood of Jesus. And that includes you, sir, and you, ma'am. You, you, you know why you cuss? Because you're putting that filthy stuff inside you. You sit around and watch movies full of cussing. You listen to the music full of cussing, and cuss comes out because cuss is down in your heart. Amen. Throw that in there for free for you. You say, I ain't never heard a preacher talk like that. You've been going to a weird church, I can tell you that. You need to find you a real one. So here comes David. You know that song. Only a boy named David, only a little brook. Only a boy named David, the five little stones he took. Only a boy named David, only a little sling. Only a boy named David, but he could shout and sing. And one little stone went in the sling, and the sling went around and around. You know that song. Well, you've been going to church wrong with some weird churches. Uh, that's a kid's song. And David comes out and he says, who in the world is that? They said, shh, that's Goliath. Don't let him hear you talking about that. He said, did you hear him? He cussed God. He cussed God. Why don't somebody go over and knock his brains out? And they said, David, you shouldn't be so judgmental. We should be loving and accepting he said, you guys been listening to Joel Osteen. I've been reading my Bible. He teacheth my fingers to fight. That's what my Bible says. I'm losing some of y'all. Uh, you got to grow up sometime. Might as well do it this morning. And they said, and David said, did you? Well, look at what he said. He said, now, David, they have their beliefs and we have ours. I mean, he believes in Allah and we should be more accepting and kind. After all, we're going to the same place. He said, no, we ain't. We ain't going to the same place. I ain't going where he's going. That's crazy. That'd be the same as here, except where. He said, I ain't going one place. I'm going the other place. He said, I, I have heaven to wait on me. I'm going to glory. I, I don't know where that guy's going, but to heaven. And he said, I, I, somebody ought to go and take care of him. They said, now, we are going to discuss in our next business meeting how we can better our relations with the Philistines. And we're going to have a man come in and teach our, our church and our young men and our schools how to increase our being able to get along with our brothers all over the world. David said, you people are crazy. I don't know who wrote them books y'all reading, but it ain't got nothing to do with what's right. First of all, he ain't our brother. And second, he's cussing our God. Now 
let's go. I'm going to go get him. And Saul said, well, if nothing else will do, you know, they put a big old helmet on him about that big, big old male armor. And, and he said, Lord, I can't even walk with all this junk on me. They said, you got to learn a little Greek and you got to learn a little Hebrew and you got to do this and you got to impress him with your education and talk to him and dialogue. He said, get this junk off me. I can't fight like this. And he said, if you'll leave me alone, I'll take care of him. And they said, you can't do it. You're just a lad. You're just a little boy. And he said, little is much when God is in it. And he said, I was out there keeping my daddy's sheep one day. And he said, a bear come up out of the woods. And he said, I prayed in the Lord and the Holy Ghost come on me. He said, I grabbed that bear. He said, I kicked him in the throat. I punched him in the eyeballs and knocked him off a cliff. And he said, another day or two later, I was out there keeping my daddy's sheep and a lion come up out of the thicket. And this lion come up. I grabbed him by the beard. I tried jujitsu him. I karate chopped him in the neck. He said, I took care of him. And he said, the same God that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear shall deliver me from the hand of this uncircumcised Philistine who has defied the armies of the living God. They right. said, Whew. one thing about it, he got guts. Same thing I said about Moses. And it wasn't that he's anything special. David wasn't nothing special. They say he's about 17 when this happened. But God is in him. So he goes down and picks up them five rocks. You know why he got five? Because big boy over here had four brothers. And it, they list them on over there. And some of them was his sons. For further details, read the National Enquirer for sick-minded people. You say, is that in the Bible? Yeah, it is. So he gets five of them. And the number there of death. And he puts one in a pouch. And here he goes, wouldn't you like to have seen that? So he starts coming at him like this right here. And he said, prepare to meet God, big boy. I can imagine him that high. There's Goliath, his head touched that ceiling right there. And Goliath was laughing so hard he took his helmet off. Big mistake. Big mistake. Put his helmet down. He said, look, y'all. Is that the best you, is that all you got, King Saul? <laughs> hey, boy, now go out here before I feed you to the birds. I'll make hamburger meat out of you. Go on back home before you get hurt. And he's around and said, look, y'all, who he sent to fight me. Look at that. <laughs> and he set out another string of cuss words. And when he did, David put a rock in that sling and the Holy Ghost went, got in that rock. Then on, that was a special rock. I don't know how big it was, maybe that big. I would rather be in front of a 44 pistol aimed right at my chest than a rock that God was in. So, he took it, he begins to sling. The giant's laughing. He let go of that thing. He couldn't miss. The holy, I mean, it's like, you know, it's like one of them laser things they do in, in Iraq and stuff where they got the laser on it. It came and bam, that rock went out of there. Goliath standing up there 10 feet tall. Son, that thing sunk up in his forehead. Lord have mercy. That poor old fellow didn't know what hit him. He come tumbling down. Bigger they are, harder they fall. He went down. David went and jumped up on him, grabbed his sword that he couldn't hardly lift and goes, Whack! And cuts his head off and pulls his big old nasty hair that ain't been washed in six months. And he pulled it up like that. And he looks at it. Uh, now, what, what was you guys saying about him being blood running out of there and everything? And the Philistines took it and went, Oh my goodness. And the Israelites said, Woo! Great is our God. And they won the victory. You know why? It wasn't because of a sword. They didn't have tanks. They didn't have missiles. They didn't have guns. They had little was much because God was in it. Yeah. We're living in a day that is uh, celebrity obsessed. You gotta be a celebrity to do anything. You gotta have four college degrees before anybody listen to you open your mouth. That's not the teaching of the Bible. Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe I'm talking to some people this morning that need to hear. One, one woman in the Bible one time said, these people cast a lot of money in and this widow 
put in all the money she had. And you know what the Lord said? She put in more than anybody. And they said, Lord, she put in $2. They put in 500 And he said, she gave it all. They only gave a little percentage. So little is much when God is in. I heard about this man. He's a missionary on this ship. And on this ship, he was laying downstairs one night, old days, back in the old days, before electricity, had lamps. And somebody hollered out, man overboard! And everybody panicked, and he thought, oh, my goodness. And he put his lantern up to the window to see if he could see, and he couldn't see nothing. He said, I wish there's something I could do. I wish there was something I could do. And he didn't find out till the next morning. He didn't find out till the next morning. They said, we rescued that man last night. Somebody put a lamp in the window, and it shined right on him out there so we could find him, and we rescued him. Amen. Isn't that something? Just a little putting that. You don't know what you just letting your light shine one little time. Amen. One kid. If you think about this, if you, just to say you went somewhere this evening, brought one kid to that youth service tonight, and their whole future has changed in eternity. And all you did, just call them and invite them and go by and pick them up. My whole life was changed because of one church service. I've never been the same since. I was 18 years old. I was going the wrong way, let me tell you. And all the people that I've seen saved, all their future has changed because of one church service. Don't ever, ever, ever think there's, oh, it's not important. We don't, we don't usually go... So, you know, we just stay home. Don't, don't think like that, y'all. Every time we walk in here, every time you pick up that book, every track you give out, little is much when God is in it. I thank the Lord. Somebody prayed. Somebody fasted. Somebody brought Holy Ghost revival to Nebo when I was 18 years old, buddy, and I'm standing here preaching this morning because of it. It wasn't a famous preacher. wasn't a famous singing group. There was a woman up in Nebo that fasted six days and nights. And an old preacher come to town that got up and prayed every morning at 4 o'clock in the morning. That's how I got saved. You know what? The world thinks that ain't nothing. But little is much when God is in it. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Nobody's talking. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed now. I want you to search your heart this morning. We'll take just a minute. First question I want to ask you is, do you know for 100% certain that you've been born again, that you're a Christian, that you know you're saved? If you don't, that's something you need to settle first. Get that settled first. And if you're here this morning... You are saved, but you haven't been doing right. Be a good time just to crowd around this altar and say, Lord, I'm not much. I'm just a little sixth grader going to school tomorrow. A little as much when God is in it. You say, I'm just an insignificant housewife preacher with some kids, and I can't make much influence on this world. A little as much if God is in it. How many of y'all will just meet me here at this altar? Come on, let's pray. And let's just crowd around here and say, Lord, this little building here sitting on the side of the interstate is nothing compared to that big old world out there. But we believe little is much and God is in it. Let's get our lives on this altar tonight. Make a difference. Make a difference in somebody's life. God will bless you for it. Just crowd around here this morning. Let's just pray for a few minutes and then we're going to go. And just get down and say, Lord, I don't have much, but what I have, it's yours. I don't have a lot of talent or ability, but what I have, I'm giving it to you. Uh, that's what I appreciate about Miss Rachel. She didn't have she didn't have a lot of money. She didn't have a lot of of, uh, of fame or fortune. But I tell you one thing: God had every inch of that lady. He had every inch of that lady. Let's just get on our knees here this morning. Amen. Many are coming. Many are coming. Let's just get on our knees this morning. Say, Lord, I'm not much, but I give you what I am. I give you my hands, I give you my feet, I give you my head, I give you my life, 
I give you my time. I give you my house, my car, my kids, my husband, my wife. Lord, I just give it to you. You do whatever you see fit. You do live as much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown. You can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. Make that step right now. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, do with us, for us, to us, with us what ought to be done this morning. I thank you so much for our church. I thank you for what you've done for us. I thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy and your concern. I pray now that you'd bless every person on this altar today. Lord, do what ought to be done in their lives. I pray that you'd uh, bless them and watch over them and take care of them. And Lord, help every one of them, Lord, to give you everything they have and are. I pray for that one here this morning who's holding back. Maybe he's not saved. Maybe he's not ready to meet you. Lord, please touch that heart also. God, do what ought to be done in our lives. Help us, Lord, to live for you and serve you. Bless every single person here this morning. And I pray that from this day on, that every one of us will just make up our mind to live for you, serve you, and give you everything. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Just keep playing. Amen. Amen. Some still praying this morning. You can pray as long as you need to. Amen. Amen. Some of these folks got a long drive ahead. About 12 hours, more, 14. Some's already traveling. Little as much. God, you know what you need to do? You give God what you got. That's all he asks. He don't want you to give what you ain't got. He wants what you've got. You're, if you can work on cars, work on cars for help people out. Help widows out, people that can't afford it. If you can build stuff, build stuff for people that need it. Use it for whatever talent you've got, use it for God. Use it for the Lord. If you can play an instrument, use it for the Lord. Use it for God. That's why I give it to you. That's why you've got talent. Use for His glory. Amen, y'all. Praise God. Hallelujah. Life's short, y'all. This lady just 47. Her birthday is just last week. 47 years old. Went to sleep and never woke up. And that could have easily been me or you. And will be. One day. One day my turn's coming. One day your turn's coming. Let's get busy for God. Do something for God. I challenge you. Go call somebody and say, can we bring the kids to church tonight? You say, Bro, preacher, I already got plans. Change them. You ever thought of that? Ever crossed your mind to change your plans? Maybe you need to think about that once in a while. Uh, uh, I want to come get the kids. Let me take them to church tonight. We're going to give away this nice brand new laptop. It's going to be a lot of fun tonight. And we got a surprise for every kid that's going back to school. The video presentation on Satan's devices is going to be a big night here at 6 o'clock this evening. Amen. So don't, don't, don't dare. Don't dare miss it. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? Isn't that a blessing, y'all? Amen. Y'all pray for Opie and Amanda here. Lord, just bless them. She's only 22 and he's only 15. Lost mom. So y'all pray for us. Back in Florida, the Lord just have them. Okay? Amen. Amen. Be sure and speak to these family before you go. Amen. Amen. All right. Now we're going to switch gears tonight. It ain't going to be just fun and games tonight. We're going to have some fun, but it's going to be hard, rough tonight. Every kid in Burke County needs to see and hear what we're going to have here tonight. Uh, uh, it'll be maybe change a little bit from the youth rally, but it's how Satan is at work. You know why we have so many 